and eight to about ten and seven eighths. So we're looking at six eighth total starting at ten eighth, ten and one eighth with an additional six eighths. Or sorry, three quarter. Probably be it's three quarter. It's the same deal, it comes up a quarter inch from the bottom. So ten and an eighth over, three quarter wide, or three quarter diameter. Now, I have these lines marked out where I need to cut, what it's for, where it's going. Put some Sharpie in there and make it a little easier to see without the light. And I'll take the Sharpie off when I go to cut because that's the whole point of the scribe line. It's more accurate. Same deal. I'll mark that out so you can see it. Come right off. No harm, no foul. Hold them up together and line it all up. I can see light through, and they should be probably not perfectly the same length, but it's going to get TIG welded up. I'm going to have to put this this line here is this line here minus the dip right here. So we're taking all of that out, so it'll just be nice and flat. This will still be there, but it'll just be straight. So that's this right here. This one, this right here, there, bottom of that, that we marked out here, that that we marked out is the bottom of that. So I'll take you guys over to the break with me and we'll put a bend in here. After we put a bend in here, I'm going to be carving this shape out of a hard block wood. Um, and we'll test that out and see how that works. It should be pretty good. Okay, we're over here at the break where the fun stuff starts. So I've taken a little piece of scrap metal and I cut it up into a bunch of little slivers and marked some lines just to do some test uh, testing on the break on what depth I needed to be set at so that I get a accurate and uh, replicated break for the panels. And uh, this will be where it starts coming together. I've been spent a little bit of time figuring out, um, making some schematics and getting measurements off of the original panels to get this done, so it'll be nice to get it get it coming together. So this will be where it starts getting exciting. So all we're going to do, I have this already set up, take a break, open it up, slide our piece in. Drive line. We'll put the line it up fairly closely with the scribe line, but we'll leave a little bit of room for it to roll. I measured to the center, and it's about it's about an eighth eighth inch or uh, sorry, an eighth inch. Half of circumference roll. We'll come out. Just gonna eyeball it. Pretty good idea. Come out a bit. Get a little more room to breathe. Bite on me. In this process, like setting up a TIG weld, the more attention you pay in the setup, 
the less of a headache you'll have down the road. Yes, this bend, if I make this bend wrong, then I gotta start over. Nobody wants that. With a brake, you always you get a 90 degree bend, <laughs> just with the way metal works. It's got a little bit of memory, so it'll bounce back, so I'll, I'll go a couple degrees past 90. I've got my handy gauge here. <laughs> Come back. Test it. Not quite 90. A little bit more past. Let it rebound. I'm happy with that. We can always touch it up later. Yeah, maybe touch it. Always best to sneak up on it. Go too fast, you get too much. Out with it. Perfect. So you can see, it's probably left two or three sixteenths, so an eighth to three sixteenths off the scribe line on the inside. And that lined up our cuts there, smack dab in the center. Just what we were looking for. So our scribe lines are on the inside now. That way, this outside. I mean, the paint will fill up the scribe lines, and they're not. You can barely catch a fingernail on them, so it doesn't affect the integrity of the panel or anything, but this will just make it nice to look at before it gets painted. We'll go ahead and run that on the second one. And you want to do, if you're making two identical pieces for two separate cars with the same car, you want to do them in tandem. So cut a line on that, cut a line on this, break a bend on that, break a bend on this. That way you know what you did, and you do it exactly the same. Again, same deal. Bring it up. Keep an eye. Keep an eye on your angle finder. Come back. On this piece, since it's so long, I've, I've had to go probably five degrees past ninety. That's pretty well spot on. And if I'm worth my salt, yep, smack dab in the center of the bend again, and that'll let us put the hammer form down in there, and you'll see when we get there, but I'll take, I have some wooden dowels that are hardwood, so I torch the end of it just to make them a little harder, and I'll use those as a, as a hammer form to beat those conical beads down in there, and then this edge will come under, come underneath the panel into here, and I'll be able to clean off the excess. So there'll be there'll be a little hemisphere here, or a half circle, not a hemisphere, be a little half circle in here, and I'll grind that out or cut it out. That'll just be how I'm feeling at the moment, and I'll be able to tig tig that gap in, and hopefully it'll look look pretty close to the original. All right, and we're back. So, when we left off, I had these bent up. I cut these little slits out with a relief in order to make these conical beads, kind of like a, what a toe die would leave um, for a pull max or a power hammer shrinker stretch or a shrinking die. Um, I don't have access to that for this, so, and they're slightly different. So what I did was I carved out a similar shape to that. It's gonna be, uh, if I remember off head, a half inch, or sorry, a quarter inch longer than what it is on that panel because I'm eliminating this dip down. So that's how I measured it out and carved it out of this wood. And here's the test piece, um, the bluing, and the uh, those are all. That's all heat um, discoloration. Um, I used this this piece of metal 
in the indention after I had it carved out into the test piece, I just used this metal to uh, keep it direct fire off the wood, um, just to harden it up a little bit extra so I can do this twice accurately. Um, so all I did was just slowly took a, this wooden dowel or when I really needed some extra, extra heft, I used the chisel end of this body hammer and really just kind of slowly worked, worked that conical bead in. Once I have this shaped up um, enough for me to think that I need to check it, I'll, I'll pop this panel off of this wood here and I'll let y'all see kind of what it, what it looks like underneath and see what I carve. Kind of what I was afraid of is happening just a little bit. Not too bad, nothing unsavable. But I'll try and it's something simple. Better. Not perfect, but better. 